Hey everybody. Um, because of a bunch of requests I got, I decided to do a series on actual trap sets. So it's going to be right from the fall beaver trapping open water right through to muskrat. Some mink sets that I use, Martin, Fisher, Wolf sets, Fox, Lynx, um, Otter, and so on. And uh, so, you know, for all the young guys out there, I hope uh, it helps with some of uh, the questions you had, and, uh, and good luck on the line. Alrighty, enjoy. enjoy. Hey guys, we're going to do a... Hope, it work. hope it's pointing in the right direction. We're going to do a mink box set. Um, very basic set. There's only a couple of minor details that are important. You know, your number one thing for a mink box set is location. And pretty much any place, you know, your mink are traveling, once you put your bait in and your scent down, they're gonna, they're, they'll find your, your set no problem. So my main concern is having it covered so the birds don't find it. So that when a mink gets caught, he can get down into the water or under brush, just somewhere where, you know, the birds aren't gonna be messing around with them. And the other, important thing on mink box set is the trigger positioning on the trap. Now this is how I have over however long found to be the absolute best trigger positioning for mink. I know there will be guys out there that disagree but whatever works for them and works for you, you can use it. But this is the only way I set a trigger for mink in a mink box. Um, when I'm using a, a running log set, I obviously can't use this particular shape because uh, the trap holder is down here and that will uh, stop you know, from having a trigger on the bottom. The now I like to have it so that the trigger is in the back and the reasoning for that is that gets the mink to start wiggling his way in there already. Now you have to remember one thing, mink they love to wiggle around into places and fight their way in. Now you see this, almost every mink is going to stick his head in here or in, sorry, right in here or right in there and try and push through there. That's why those triggers are bent down to catch them on the shoulders and force the, the trap sprung. Now you'd be amazed at how they can get in there without springing a trap. There was a, back in the 80s when they were doing, I believe it was caught, the Canadian Association for Humane Trapping, doing the studies on traps. They had one female mink went through a, a Connie bear trap with the trigger set in a, a V, like a nor what we used to use as a normal trigger shape. It went through the trap 111 times without springing it. And I myself have watched Martin in a Martin box go down their hind feet on top of the box and their body goes right through the trigger and they chew on the bait and they come back out and sit there looking around. I've actually watched that. And uh, you know they can, and that's also why you'll notice I set this trigger on the third notch of the dog and that is to because the the farther back the third notch is the easiest to spring the second and then the first is the that's where there's the most strength and it's the harder 
for the trap to spring than any of the other ones. Like I said, I've got a piece of beaver meat in there, some mink scent on the on the box or on the log anywhere around there, and trap wired to a, a good solid spot. Now this mink is going to be able to get caught and roll around and get down into this water here or into the brush where you know hopefully the birds won't find them. You really can't stop another mink from finding them because they can um, smell it around pretty good. But then I'll just throw a little bit of brush, not brush, sorry, any loose grass in front of the trigger and stuff like that and that just gets the mink to have to wiggle in there even more. Alrighty, and that's just basically, like I said, a mink box. It's pretty easy to set, but the only thing you got to remember is that trigger thing is fairly important. So, alrighty, that is your mink box set.